um parts that I need to to have uh, corrections here. Uh, it is supposed to be this part, the B. Uh, it should be T cross N, but I think I'm drawing the wrong picture. Okay. So it was. It is going to be T cross N. This should be a T. Okay. And this should be N. Okay, that that's just uh, a correction for you. Okay, so the so we are um, finishing the normal factors by normal. Uh, some examples. Okay, now the next part of this chapter 13 is about the torsion. Uh, but before that, let me uh, maybe explain some notes for you. So if this is the curve, And maybe this is the unit tangent factor. And this is, let's say, the n here, the normal vectors. So as t cross n, so we will have. We will have B here, okay? And if you can imagine a plane, a layer that is determined by the normal and binormal, like this one, this is we call the normal plane. And the other one that is determined by the unit tangent vectors and the normal, it's called the osculating plane. Osculating. So the osculating plane here, meaning that it is closest to a part of the curve. So let's say the curve is this, this curve C. Okay. So osculating means in, in Latin, it's it's from osculum. It means kiss, so meaning it's a kiss to kissing the part of the curve. Okay. And we may also have another terms called the uh, the circle of curvature or uh, osculating uh, circle. So if we look at this y and x. Okay, let's say that is the curve. 
And let me make this into bigger. Okay. So if we have P here, and the P will be moving, okay. And P is moving out, and it's having the normal. Here's the normal. If you see the point, you will see it's creating a circle. Let me make a circle here. Okay. Okay. And when we move the P, maybe here. This is N. And we may have the circle Okay, maybe around there. And this is the curve C. So oscillating circle. So oscillating circle of curve C at point P is a circle in the uh, oscillating plane. that passes through through point P with a radius is equal one over uh, curvature and a center distance one over uh, curvature from point P along the factor N. Okay. So which means that the radius will be dependent on the curvature. So we may also think that the circle of curvature, uh, it's similar to how the curve C behave. Okay? So if the curve C is having the same tangent, having the same curve uh, normal, having the same curvature at some point, the circle will also behave similar. So imagine like uh, when you are moving this P, okay? So when you're moving this P maybe through here, this part here, the curvature is highest, right? It's, it's higher than this part, okay? Let's say this is P, this is maybe Q. Q has a larger curvature in, in curvature, right? So you will imagine that the circle will be smaller, maybe here, like this. And when you are going here, the curvature is lower. So the circle will be lower. And uh, the circle will be uh, bigger, 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 okay? So, so, so imagine this. So maybe in here, the circle is as big as this B here. So maybe the circle is here, this big, and then getting uh, smaller and smaller until it's reaching this, uh, the uh, the vertex, right? 
Okay, that's just um, some notes for uh, the circle of curvature. There is a uh, some uh, some proof for the osculating. If we are writing the curvature as, but let me write this as a vector functions of a cos t. So this is a circle, okay, with radius a. Okay, remember that this the circle have the. Uh, This need to be a, so it should be a and a, a squared, a squared, right? Okay. Okay, now we are uh, deriving the r. And we, we also uh, calculate the length. The length, which is a, right from here, this you, you square root and adding sine squared and plus cos squared, right? You have the tangent vectors. It's negative sine t plus cos t. Oh, sorry, uh, I g. Okay, you got the tangent, and we can get the, 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 the first derivative. From here, we got negative cos t, negative sine t, j, okay? And using the formula for curvature, we get The whole thing is become one, and the r prime is a, so it's one over a. Okay, this is why you get the one over uh, curvature here. Okay, so actually radius is always one over curvature. Okay. Okay. Now we move to uh, the other part of chapter 13, which is the uh, torsion. Okay, so I hope you get my point here for the, uh, the normal plane, osculating plane, and there will be another terms called the circle of curvature or osculating circle. Uh, later I will show you some uh, some parts in the uh, GeoGebra. Okay, but let me deal with the torsion first, okay, torsion. Okay. So let me write the definitions first, okay. What the torsions, uh, by uh, definitions, in terms of math, we usually write the torsions like that, or that, yeah, tau, okay? So it def defined by by this, okay? So again, the B is the binormal, N is the normal vectors, and S refers to the length, okay? So if we are, let me uh, draw the 3D space. Okay. 
So imagine this is the curve. And we have, let's say this is the unit tangent vector. And oh, maybe it's too close to the origin. Let me make a little bit higher. Okay, maybe here in this T. And let me make this as my normal. Okay. And we will have the binormal here. Okay. Let me make the normal plane. The normal plane is there. Okay. And the Oh, sorry, sorry. The normal plane should be with B. And the osculating plane here. Okay. Now you will have uh, at this point, at this T. Oh, maybe a different color. So we will have the rate of change of T with respect to the length. And also rate of change of P with respect to also the same as the, the length, okay? So, so the curvature we write in terms of dt over ds. The curvature uh, at point P on curve C this indicating how tight the curve will will bend okay. and dt over ds will tell how uh, the normal plane change as p moves. So if you are seeing why it's, it's it's it can tell us it can tell the normal plane because the dt over ds is parallel with the normal factor right from from the direction of the factors okay okay so uh, let me continue so as p moves okay so as p moves the point p moves so oh, sorry p is here so imagine if this p is, is moving so as p moves p moves along the curve c the the tangent at p will rotates rotates in direction of n so imagine that this is moving 
the tangent, this tangent here, this T, will rotate. Okay, will rotate. So imagine from here, this T, 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 it, it will be rotate, right? It will be rotate in directions of the factor N. So, let me write in different color. Since B is, it's a normal to osculating blade. So since B here, and this is the osculating plane here, so it's a normal, right? So since B is a normal to oscillating plane, so the B over the S, it tells how the oscillating plane changes as B moves along C. Then okay, from here, thus there is a scalar in this case we we are take the scalar as the torsion okay that uh, db over ds it should be equal with the negative of the torsion and normal. Okay, if we take take a dot product with n, okay, n dot n is one, right? So we will have. With the dot n like that. This is the torsion. Okay. So if you imagine this in terms of um, physics phenomenon. So let me uh, write in this color. So if this is B and this is the DB over DS and this you have N, right? You will have uh, an equations that state that you will have, this is the negative part of. So it will be balancing these two factors, right? It's, it's balancing this too. So it will be, it will be if we imagine this, it's, it's like a twisting the space, the space curve in between of the, uh, these two vectors, right? And the scalar tau is when the, this, uh, db or ds is equal with some scalar that multiply with n okay but why it's negative this negative is came from here okay. and we also have the we can 
rearrange the form into the uh, some chain row arrangement. We can arrange like this so that we can apply with a simple terms. So we can calculate more, um, more effectively. And we can also write down the torsion in terms of this. And also, we can also exchange all this into R, R prime, R double prime, as you may uh, see from our last discussions. So we can uh, write down the torsions into the cross. Oh, wait, this should be the cross product. And this is actually the third derivative of R, right? For the uh, equations. And the R prime, we can cross it with R double prime. The, oh, wait. and then square. Okay, this is the last part of chapter 13, the torsion, okay, the torsion parts. Uh, it's a little bit complicated, but I think uh, the one you are need to focus on is this and this. Okay. This you can, but uh, if you feel too complicated, uh, you just focus on uh, this part. I think what you need to do is you need to just finding the the binormal factors, finding the normal, finding binormal, find its derivative. Right, and finding the normal uh, dot this two, and divide by the uh, the length or the value of the r prime. Okay, this is all the uh, the torsion parts. Okay. Let me check the uh, if we have some Let me check the picture.
Okay, I think I can show you. Uh, wait a minute. Okay, I will show you the some graph. I hope you can see the graph. Okay, so in this GeoGebra, you can find the torsion and curvature. Uh, you will see the the graphs, and you can change the parameter. So you will see that how the normal, binormal, and the unit tangent vector they uh, they can move around the the curve. The curve is just a helix from this cosine and sine, okay. And the z is just a level, some constant with t, and you can uh, describe with the with the sphere like that. So. You can also uh, you can also change the change the uh, the formula here the cos and sine you can change and it will create another graph and you will see here the torsion is zero point one so all will be uh, the same because it's a helix. I'll show you another another part. Mm, let me check this. Yeah, it, it's the same. Uh, I think this is also the same. But it is a different curve. So you will see at different curve, it will have different torsions. Okay. Because the, how the vectors will uh, twist the space curve, it will be also different. Okay. If you see from uh, physics phenomenon, oh, let me check the... Um, let me check this. I think no. Um, this is physics. Oh, let's see here. Uh, this is we are focusing on the angle that creating so this is what we, we what the space curve looks like when you are increasing the angle for the torsions Okay, this is the original part. Okay. Radius of, oh, okay, okay, wait. Okay, uh, the radius of the oscillating circle value, uh, well, it starts from this circle, okay? The circle uh, formula for the factor functions. So this formula. So if we start with a circle, 
with a radius, just take a and just take a, a constant a. If we are trying to find the, the first derivative, okay, we can do that from here. We can find its value, which is we are adding this squared and adding this squared and then square root, which is this just a, right? And by doing that, we can evaluate this tangent vector, the unit tangent vector. And we are just divide these vectors with this scalar. And we have negative sine t in x and cos t in y, okay? And then we can apply to look for the curvature, which is the, the derivative of t, and then we find the, the values, which is just this squared plus this squared. It's cos squared plus sine squared is one, right? So we can put one, and this part is a, okay? So the radius, the radius here is one over curvature, okay? So if you want to look at the radius, it's actually one over curvature. So if you have uh, a curve that you want to apply that the uh, oscillating circle, how much the, the radius will be, it will be always be one over curvature. Okay. Okay, I hope that's clear. Um, okay, that's all. So this is the end of chapter 13. So end of chapter 13. Okay, the next thing before we are moving to chapter 14, I need to announce uh, several information for you uh, because uh, we will not have any offline class until the end of the semester if there is no, uh, no change, then we will do all uh, courses online all uh, quiz, final exam, also online. So I will explain how we are going to do our distance learning course uh, evaluations, okay? So uh, let me write, so online course. So first, what I need to tell you is the difficulty for of, uh, for online course compare with what we are uh, usually do in class, okay? So first is, I'm not sure if the students pay attention or not, right? And this is, uh, I think every online class is having the same problem like this. Like maybe you are, uh, click the, the link and then maybe you are going somewhere, I don't know, right? And the second, um, evaluation part. It will be difficult. How we are going to do our exam. And how to grade the score, right? That's a, a problem. So by these two, uh, at least these two problem, uh, what I'm suggesting is, especially for number two, okay? I have, um, okay, I have, write down, if you check the, the chat box now, the the chat box, I, I sent invitation link to Google Classroom. So, so we are going to Google Classroom. And how to join the Google Classroom? So to join, first you need to create 
uh, gapps account which is free so gapps account is a Google a Google account that is linked to your student ID and it will be like uh, it's called the Google suite if you don't know about this you can check the website the NTUSD website on how we are how to create the account okay once you have the account you can join the classroom okay so what we are going to do in the classroom okay, first probably the Google meeting will be uh, generate through that classroom not from this now this this link okay it will be easier because all of you are inside the classroom so you don't need to like um, every time you join this Google meet link you in, you need to accept or uh, you need to uh, requesting admissions to get inside the Google right and every time I uh, check uh, because students not always come on time and maybe in the middle of a lecture they just come and they need to to be accepted the link so if you are if you are already inside the classroom you can join the Google meet easily okay no need for permissions again so it easier easier to generate uh, Google Meet link. Okay, why I'm choosing to move to Google Classroom because I think the Moodle is is not really suitable because I want to. To, to integrate all the system into one. Okay, so the other part is exam. Okay, so once you are in the classroom, you will see any assignments or any information of quiz directly. Okay, you will get, you get the uh, assignments or quiz directly on classroom meaning the Google classroom okay and that is the way we are going to have our exam okay so the exam so first, I will uh, assign link on Google Classroom. And what you are going to do is you need just to open the link and all the questions will be on that link. But you need to prepare some something for your exam. So let me write uh, preparations. Because it will be a little bit uh, complicated if you don't pay attention. So preparations. First, make sure your internet is OK. Number two, you need to prepare uh, to prepare two devices. Okay. The first device you can choose. Okay, you can choose the device. It can be your smartphone. It can be your tablet. It can be your laptop. this device will be connected to Google Meet. 
Okay. The second device you need to choose, you can choose also smartphone or tablet or laptop. This is for opening the link for exam. Okay. Okay. And then when you open the link, okay. When you open the link, make sure, okay, make sure. So for example, if your case is, so this is the laptop, your laptop, okay, for example. And this is the webcam. And this is your face. Make sure the webcam are detecting your face. Okay. So this is, for example, if this is the exam, okay, if this is the exam, and you take your phone here, and this will be Google Meet. So I need to see all the, at least your face and maybe some part of your neck here, okay? Or you can maybe take the other way around. So this is the exam. And maybe the camera is here. But you need to be able to put your head, okay, on this camera, okay, the smartphone camera. And maybe this is the laptop, your laptop for uh, Google Meet. Okay, once you are opening the exam, it will detect your face. So exam, it will detect your face. So you need to be able to adjust the camera, although you need to, to calculate and write some in paper. So maybe this is your paper here. Make sure that when you write the paper, all the height here can be detected by the camera. If it's not detected, it will uh, report to the system later after you submit, okay? So it will detect your face. It will detect your noise, but I think uh, the noise is, is, is okay, I think. Uh, it will detect if you switch steps. If you switch tabs or open any other app. Okay, so you need to prepare at least two devices for, for the exam, okay? Um, probably this Thursday, this Thursday, um, I'm not sure if you can try to to take some uh, trial, not trial, uh, for, for dummy trial for the system to be working or not. I've tried in a small class previously and it works. Um, only 13 students and it works. But because we have a lot of students, uh, I think that takes quite time to, to deal with but I will let you know later, okay? So um, this is the preparation for exam, okay? And to prepare the exam, please bring your own paper, okay? 
bring your own paper. Um, before the exam started, you need to show the paper. To show the paper to the camera before we start. Okay. And then after you submit, so and then submit, submit the form. And then a plus take picture of your paper. Okay, and send the the picture to email. Okay, I will explain what the email later. But this is how we are going to do it. Okay. So first, okay, let me let me explain one more time. So first. To be linked with the exam forms, you need to create the Google Classroom. Okay, you need to to be to be invited to the Google Classroom. How to be invited? You need to create GApps account. Okay, and the invitation is in this checkbox here, the classroom. Okay, for this class is this invitation. Okay. Let me copy paste one more time. Okay, that that is the the the, the classroom invitations. Okay, make sure all of your classmates invited to the classroom. If no, then they, uh, it will be difficult to to take the exam. Okay. Okay. Now the um, yeah, I think that's it for the preparations. Um, the other thing is, I believe the difficulty later will be the technical difficulty you will have. Like maybe you will not be able to see the question at the first time, what you were gonna do and etc. That, that is technical. I will explain um, later. Okay. But at least this is the one that you need to do right now. Create the GApps account. And then get into the Google Classroom. Okay. Okay, that's it, that's it for the online course explanation from me. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know. Or maybe you can just type in in the chat box okay i hope you get it okay okay if there's no questions um i will move on to the next chapter A anyway on exam, they will conclude this all detection with the they call the trust the trust score, and I will let you know uh, how much percentage we need. Okay, so trust score means uh, the system will trust that you are being honest. Okay. So it will detect on how you are uh, conducting the test, okay? But I hope you are not cheating. Yes, both camera need to be open because here, uh, when you're doing exam, in this case, when your exam is in the laptop, the laptop need to be allowed to open the camera because they will detect your face. So it, it of course, it needed to be open. And this Google Meet is showing your face. And if you have some problems, you can, we can discuss through this Google Meet, okay? So Google Meet is uh, that I can also talk with you to get this Google Meet. And exam, the camera is detecting your face, okay? Also, if you're doing exam with your phone, your phone will be also uh, detecting your face, and Google Meet through your laptop is 
for our uh, discussion if you have any problem a technical problem when you assign the exam okay uh, for technical um, when you are click the link okay so I will send the link okay the, I will send the link so when you click this link so click link it will show you some videos Please watch the videos. It's just a two, three minutes videos. Okay. To well, at least at least one one minute, two minutes videos. This is to set set up your uh, settings and preference. Settings and preference on your laptop or your phone. And if, if you are going to have exam on your phone, your if you have if you are using iPhone. You need to open with Safari. Okay. Else, you can use uh, Chrome, Google Chrome. Okay. But uh, they they will tell you how to use it eventually in in videos. Okay. Okay. Any questions? not let me continue to uh, the introduction of uh, the chapter 14 okay okay um, chapter 14. Uh, professor, sorry. Uh, I just created the the GAPS account and I signed mm -hmm. into the the classroom, but it's all in Chinese. Do you know how I can change it? Uh, I think you can check the settings uh, oh. on the uh, because I, I I already changed for myself and I changed to to English. Okay. You can you can check in the settings. Okay, maybe right. later I will show, or maybe you can you can ask other students because other students I think will be in English also. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, two cameras. Uh, actually, for your uh, what do I mean? The camera is like this. Okay. So for the exam part, your head need to be. Uh, in front of the exam, like for for example, this this part. Okay. It's it's okay if you just uh, maybe take nods and see maybe because you write some calculations, right? But at least the camera should show you the uh, the neck to and your head. Okay. And the other is camera for Google Meet. You can you can aim the camera from sides that's fine that's fine okay so two cameras aiming but different angle that's okay 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 now the chapter 14 uh, it's uh, it's called the partial derivatives. Before we go into what partial derivative is, uh, the first part of the introductions is uh, we start with the functions of two variables. In your textbook, uh, it mentions how the temperature temperature at a surface of Earth at any 
time. It depends on x and y, the longitude and latitude, the, the, the coordinate system. Okay, And we can think this as the temperature is depend on two variables x and y, or we can write the function of x, y. Okay. Now, um, in math, okay, in math, we usually write the terms is z. Okay. Uh, let me let me give you some uh, review of so what in calculus one we did. Okay, we did the single uh, variable. Okay, y equal f of x. Now in calculus two, we have, we call multivariable. So the variable is more than one. For example, two or more, okay, it can be more. So it has a definitions for a function of two variables, but I think it's it's not that really necessary, the definition, but it say that uh, a functions of two variables is a rule to assign or it's assigned to each ordered or the pair of real numbers. In this case, the real number is two variables, x, y, in a set of domain. A unique real number denoted by And we can write this in terms of so D is the domain, and this will be the range. Right? This F is range. Okay. So what does it mean? Which mean it means that when you apply this to this, this called Z here, which means we are assigning these two variables. So this is domain, our domain, and this becomes the range, right? The Z is our range, okay? So it's like a setting up um, two variables and the range will be Z. Or uh, if you would like to imagine like um, if you read some maps like in a in a geography courses lecture Usually you will see like maybe it will give you this is darker, okay, really dark, okay. And getting getting to mini though is getting uh, lighter, which means this is the highest. Okay, maybe a mountain, okay, maybe a mountain. So this is this is called contour. And uh, if you set this to be in uh, terms of functions, probably this is the way we are going to see. 
So Z will be the level okay, or level uh, contour. So if we have the 3D space, we may so if this is uh well it's, it's not really clear what what i'm word drawing but let me just make it so this is on xy plane okay and it has some some height there And maybe it goes down here below the. Okay. So it, it it will create. Actually, if you cut this into several parts, maybe cut here and cut here, you have a a plane, right? Maybe a plane like this. At at the top level or maybe a plane on the below okay and we call this function of x y and we can also um, use another definitions to to check, but I think uh, I will just go to explain uh, a little bit about the limits and continuity. Okay. So 14.1, the introduction is, is actually not really that necessary because as long as you can uh, imagine the curve and imagine um, how the function of two variables works and function or maybe more variables works, then it, it will be fine. Well, let me deal with the limit and continuity first. So in calculus one, we deal with the limit, and I hope to still remember. So if we have this curve f of x, and we have point uh, x0, y0, and we approach the limit from left and right, right? And we call this is limit x from, um, let's say this is x0 so x0 positive from right of f of x it should be equal to the, its limit from the left right and it should be equal with some value l And this should be all, all, all also uh, provided the limit axis. Okay. okay. Now, similarly, with this approach, uh, when we try to engage with the three dimension, and let's say we are having a random plane, let's say this is the plane here, okay, let's say this is uh, plane of x, y. Okay, let's say this is we have this point here and when we move this point, a 
across this xy plane if we projecting this okay we are changing the the level okay the z okay now based on the limit definitions we have the limit now we need to approach with two axis like that it's approaching x0 and y0 of this function and how we are going to do that if you look at this okay and you want to approach uh, to approach this point from maybe from here from here from here here from up from from left from right from anywhere you can approach from any curve right so let me write in this so there are uh, infinitely many curves that approach this x0, y0, and c0. Okay. So if you look at here, it's having many, many, many curves that can approach that, that point. Okay. Now, how, how to deal with this? Let me give you the, the example directly. If you have uh, functions, let's say negative x, y, and then x squared plus y squared, if you need to find the limit as the is x, y approaching two and one, so x approach two, y approach one of this x, y, what you are going to do is just replacing x and y with the numbers, right? So we can replace it. Let me, let me write this one more time. So we can replace it's two to x and y is one. So negative two, one, and then four plus one. We can write easily, it's, it's negative two over five, right? But this will be difficult to, to show or to prove when we are approaching zero, both x and y approaching zero. So if you write the equations, the same equations, if we are looking at the x and y, this two will be zero over zero. right okay now because we are in functions of more than one fun uh, one variables we have x and also y right in in our functions like that so we can imagine if we let okay either x or y we can let one of them zero and let the other be constant. Like constant D or, or, or constant C. Okay. Now we can we can we can uh, try to to check. Okay. So first the case in which we are having limit along the x axis this is when y equals zero so when y equals zero we are approaching just from this axis okay so we are approaching this point 
from here, from this axis, okay? Or maybe this, uh, maybe for maybe this axis, okay? And later we are trying to check this y-axis when x is zero. So we are only having this plane, right? If we have this, then we have only this plane okay? because y is zero. Now we can write this as limit as x, y getting zero, zero. This is cases that how our uh, calculus is being processed, okay? So let's write uh, the functions. And now imagine y is zero and x is a, some constant, okay? To, 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 be, to, 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 to process all this information. So y is zero, zero multiplied by a constant it will be zero. And it will be, it will be having x squared, some uh, constant x squared here, and zero, okay? And it will be a zero, okay? Now second, second possibility is we can limit on y-axis. This is when x is zero. And y is a constant. Okay. Anyone want to ask? No? Okay. Now this, we are doing the same as previously, but this is when we are changing x to zero. Okay. But since the equation is uh, similar, okay, so this will be zero and zero plus y squared. And it, it is, again, it's, it's zero. Okay. It seems, okay, when we are looking at this, and we, if we compare to what the definition on the first calculus we have, if we're having limit, we're getting from left, from right, having the same value. It's true, limit axis, right? Left, right limit, uh, uh, left hand limit, uh, right hand limit, okay? But here, when we are doing cases by cases, it seems that, let me write here, it seems this is correct, it seems. Right, but we can also limit other case. For example, if you want to approach this point, and we we approach that when maybe here with some curve of y equal x. So we can also approach this point here, this x0, y0, z0. We can approach from this. We can approach that, right? We can approach from y equal x when, when x equal y. Well, let's, let's write that. So limit. Uh, Let me write in terms of, oh yeah, let me just write along y equal x. So we limit, and we are replacing x with y, or y with x. So this becomes that, okay. And we can say that x approaching zero. And we have negative half. Now we have different different answers. 
it's not zero. Okay. So probably the conclusion here probably the limit doesn't exist. So what I'm I'm trying to show you here is this is how our calculus being processed in 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 more than uh, one functions. Okay, it's not just having left hand limit and right hand limit equal, and then it, you can provide okay limit is exists, but here you need to deal with many curves that can be approached. Okay, so let me deal with some definitions. Okay, let me deal with some definitions. So let um, f be a function of two variables. Assume f is defined in all points on we call the open disk. I will tell you later. And centered at some point x0, y0. Okay. So let me let me draw what the open disk mean. So if this is the plane, okay, you will have uh, yeah, uh, like a circle like that which means all your um, all your point on this plane it can be defined on a disk on xy plane okay it should be bigger than this but i hope you get the idea from from, from this open open disk and then we can write down that limit of some functions of two variables is equal some value if okay, given the epsilon we can find a delta greater zero such that the distance or the gap between the limit and its functions is less than epsilon. when the distance between this two point and it satisfy Or we can write in, in more uh, theoretically. So if function approach some value as the point is approaching this point, then function will be approaching L as this approaching this 
along any smooth uh, C, smooth curve C. If limit it doesn't exist, or if has different value. along a uh, different C then limit uh, doesn't exist this is precisely of what we have observed here so it has different value on different C right so the limit probably doesn't exist So I hope you still remember the epsilon delta definitions of limit. So here, if you are dealing with the calculus one, uh, the epsilon delta is, so here's your graphs, okay? And here's your, so it's, it's, it's the delta. And this will be, the epsilon okay. this is the functions it's function of x so delta and epsilon is by definitions they are already considered really really small gap okay? really really small because if you understand limit limit say that if you get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, really a lot zero here, and you get number there, it will be considered as zero in terms of limit, right? So that's that's how we are looking the epsilon and delta as a number. Okay, so here uh, we will find a positive epsilon and positive delta such that the the gap between the real value and the limit value is less than epsilon, okay? And then we can find the distance, the distance between these two. So this distance, okay? So this is, um, for example, maybe this is x0, y0, okay? So the distance we can find the distance in between of zero and epsilon. Sorry, not this distance. I mean, this x zero and maybe another x y that may be, maybe x y here. Maybe too, too long, maybe here. X0 and Y0 is a center in the open disk, uh, center of open disk. Okay. So which means the distance between this X and X0, Y and Y0 is really, really small. So if you see the distance is really small in between of zero and epsilon, which means that it's getting approached what we want to approach, the real value, okay? Okay. Uh, I think the next one is the continuity, but I think, uh, yeah, let, let me write another part, little part for continuity and we can stop the course. So definitions, functions f uh, x, y is continue 
at this point if the functions is defined and the limit Oh, sorry. It's the same as, oh, I think this is already uh, makes sense, right? It's, it's similar to what we have done in calculus one. So this is the first and the second is continuous on D, the open disk. If it is continuous at every point in an open set. And we can say also it continues everywhere every point in XY plane. So you have tr uh, at least three, three cases with some definitions. Okay. So we will continue later on from this uh, limit and continue. Maybe I will tell you more about the theorem here. Uh, maybe with um, with easy notations that you you can understand. Yeah, I think this is too much words. But I, I will later give you another uh, notations for for mathematical notes. Okay. Any any questions? Okay. And this is the introductions, just the introductions, not really going into the partial derivatives. This is just a um, concept for uh, limits, continuity, uh, all the introduction stuff. And maybe we will move on to the partial derivative maybe next Thursday, probably. Okay. And by the way, the quiz, um, like I, I, I had given you this all this explanation here. The quiz itself probably um, maybe twenty five. Is it okay? Twenty five. So next Tuesday, the quiz. So we will have the quiz on 25. The quiz will be chapter 12 plus 13. And we will be conducted online. So you, your classmates, if they didn't come today, Please let them know about all this uh, classroom, uh, GApps account, and how to prepare the exam. I will also announce on Moodles, okay, to remind all of the students to, to, to check the system. Okay. okay if there's no questions, um, actually, you can ask later. If you want, you can ask through email if you want. So I will end the course today. Uh, you can leave the meeting if you want.